What is up guys? Welcome back to Mad DIY. It's your boy Dave. Today is a good day. It's Friday. I got a lot of work to do. Uh, makes the day fly by. But today's Friday. Looking forward to the weekend. Catch up on some relaxation and do some little side projects there. Just got my package in from Adafruit. And I'm, ex I'm very, very excited to get this project going. Let me tell you how to start it. I wanted, I was actually watching a Keemstar video and he had this uh, subscriber counter in the back. Even on, on this account, I, I only got a, a couple of subscribers. You know, I, I have other YouTube channels where I, 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 your boy's pretty higher up there, you know, doing okay. But I seen uh, Keemstar at his home, he had a subscriber clock that was just like in the background there and it would actually count real time. I was like, I gotta get one of those. So I hit Google, Amazon, wherever, and I found the clock. Bam, I'm ready. Plugging it in, add one to cart, seeing the total. I am not paying damn near $500 for a YouTube subscriber counter where I can just put that on my, my phone, iPad or whatever. But I mean, it's, it's still, it's the point. It, it's kind of cool, you know, it, it's like this big monumental showing you've established something and you know I, I, I don't know I thought it would be cool but I can't pay over four hundred dollars I think it was closer to five but let's just say we'll, we'll keep it modest here I'm not gonna pay over four hundred dollars for a YouTube subscribe counter I found another one this one was actually really cool because you can link it with your uh, Facebook Instagram and all that I was like wow this one's even better and it's more digital the one that uh, Kingstar had was a uh, uh, like an old school style where, you know, the things like kind of click, click, makes a little noise. And it seems like that one would have been cheaper, but the, the one that I found, it was a digital and it counts your YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, whatever you program it to. I thought that was really cool. And this one was uh, in the $300 bracket, but still, I, I, I just can't see paying that much for a counter. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make my own. Yep. Your boy is going to make his own. I'm gonna make my own for less than 30 bucks and I'm gonna show you how it's done. These came in the mail today. These are my main two components. I still have to get the uh, shadow box and a couple other little minor things, but I'm, I'm actually gonna just use one of these shadow boxes here. I got these two empty ones there. I'll probably just use one of these guys. That one there was actually from an app that I created. It actually made the newspaper. Actually uh, made the army news as well. A lot of the Army guys at Detroit Tencom, Army base out of Warren, Michigan. It was featured there and a lot of these guys downloaded one of our apps that we had created. But I think I'm going to use one of these shadow boxes here. Actually, I like that one right there. Cherish the journey. Yeah, cherish the journey and put my subscriber counter right in that guy. But these came in, finally. Took about a week. And this was a little over $20. I'm not going to lie. My cost was probably a little over $30. I know I say we're gonna build this for less than 30 bucks. It's the reason why it cost me more because when you purchase on Adafruit, make sure you got everything in your cart that you need. I had the first thing in the cart, but unfortunately I purchased it and forgot to add the other thing. So they don't have a real convenient way for you to cancel the orders without sending them an email, take a couple more days, they'll have to cancel the order, wait for the charge back, and I just said, you know what, forget it, I'll just go ahead and pay for shipping again, so 30 bucks, I got these guys. Let's go ahead and open them up. All right, cool, cool, cool. Check that out, check that out. Add a fruit, feather, huzza with, uh, I call it the huzza. I don't know, it's probably pronounced different, it's the uh, H-U-Z-Z-A-H, and this is with the uh, ESP8266 Wi-Fi, so this is going to be a key component in what we're building today. And next I have the feather hitter kit. It's a 12 pin and 16 pin female hitter set. So these guys are going to work miracles for your boy there. These were only 95 cents. This here was 16.95. So you got 95 cents, 16.95 right there. Let's see what we got next. Okay, now on to the uh, goodies here. This guy only cost me $9.95, but this was the one I forgot to order. Uh, so of course, $9.95 and the other total, $16.95 and 95 cents. It would have been less than 30 bucks, like your boy said. But of course, I forgot to add it on, so I had to pay that additional $4.47 for shipping. And womp, 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 oh well, things happen. But here we have the Adafruit 0.56 inch, four digit, seven segment feather wing display. And over here, we have 
the Adafruit four digit seven segment LED matrix display feather wing. This guy was in the uh, second, second package that I forgot to order. So there we have it. These are the main components that we're gonna use. We're gonna pop these guys in a uh, shadow box. Of course, we're gonna use a small USB to get everything programmed. So let's see how this journey goes, guys. I've never done anything like this before. I am a tech guy. Previously, uh, my experience involves uh, a lot of network engineering. I do a lot of coding, programming, things of that nature. So from that aspect, I should be okay. Um, I am also very big into encryption devices. I, I've done a lot for federal government, Department of Defense, uh, Air Force, Army, all that good stuff. So it shouldn't be that difficult. I just never really broken things down to, I would consider this more of an engineer perspective. I'm going to keep it very, very basic and simple. I'm going to show you guys exactly step by step what I did, how it's done. Uh, you see a couple YouTube videos out there. It's basically, hey, this is what you need. Connect this, do this, do this, bam. It's very generic. So your boy's going to walk you through the process from beginning to end. And if you don't want to go through the process, you can actually buy it from me. I'll put a link down there in the description where you can go ahead and get it from. Also, I'll put a link to each item that I purchased down there in the description and use this video as a tutorial. Thank you guys for tuning in. Let's get started. First thing we're going to do is assemble the circuit. First, we want to go to silabs.com and download VCP with serial enumerations. It's uh, 5.3 megabytes. Of course, download for your particular operating system. In my case, I'm using Windows. So I'm going to download that version. It's going to... Okay, it's going to download into a zip file. Go ahead and open it up and click on the executable. At the welcome screen, click next. Of course, accept the license agreement. Next, you will get completed the installation of the CP210X USB to UART bridge driver. Click finish. Next thing you want to do is go ahead and plug in your ESP8266 into a micro USB. Plug it into your laptop, of course. And once you do that, you're going to see the installation Silicon Labs CP210 COM4 whatever screen loading use this screen here okay your next step you're going to download the Arduino uh, software you want to make sure you get a version that's going to be greater than the uh, 1.6.8 so here I'm going to download the uh, 1.8.3 go ahead and load the Arduino IDE Okay, next step is we want to install the board package. Uh, check step three in the description. The board package link is going to be there. So in your Adreno IDE program, you're going to go ahead and click File, Preference. Next step, at the very bottom, you're going to see additional board managers URLs. Go ahead and copy that link that's in step three in the description of this video. Place it right in there. Also, if you in the future, if you wanted to add more, you just simply, it's comma separated. So just place a comma there, space, add the next link. And you only got to do this one time. Once you add it, it's always going to be there. Okay, after you click OK, go ahead and select Tools. And from Tools, you're going to go select Boards. And then after you select Boards, you're going to see an option at the very top that says Board Manager. Select that option. Now, once you're in the Board Manager, you want to scroll all the way to the bottom until you see ESP8266. Uh, you're going to highlight that one, just click on it, and you're going to see an install option. Click that install, folks. After that, you're going to scroll down, and you're going to see that it's installed. You, you'll see, you can select different versions. Of course, once you do the initial install, it's going to load the, the current. So I have version 2.3.0 installed. So now you can just close out of here. Okay, after you closed out, you're going to go ahead and select tools again, and you're going to select boards. And once you select boards, now you're going to see additional area at the bottom. You're going to see the uh, Adafruit Huzza ESP8266. Go ahead and select that option. Okay, before moving forward, select tools one more time and make sure your CPU frequency is set to 80 megahertz. Also make sure your flash size is set to uh, 4 megs. And then your upload speed, uh, decent speed is going to be at 115.200. So that'll be a decent rate, I mean, for a broad rate. You can go faster, but sometimes it'll air out. So leave it at 115, 200, so we'll know everything's going to function the way it needs to. Okay, enter the following command exactly as shown into your sketchpad. And after you enter that, you're going to go ahead and save. I'll go ahead and put that into the description also as step four. But enter the following exactly into your sketchpad and hit save okay next is your blink test so after you copy that code in there the respective code that's down there in the step that i just referred to 
you're going to hit the upload option which in your program is going to be the little arrow that's pointing to the right I'll highlight that in the slide here but I want to first show you this it's blinking <laughs> your boy hooked it up but I, I, I want to highlight something here in your program it should look like this let me scoot over here so within your program I'm not sure how good it's going to show here I could not get this I kept getting an error if you're getting an error go back under tools and under tools select port mine by default was under com1 select the other com port so if you're getting an error select the com port so basically once you load your screen should look like this but your screen should look like this and if you get an error just simply change the com port what you're doing is a blink test to make that device blink now for your next step we're going to go ahead and get this guy connected to wi-fi go ahead and use the code that's provided in step five and copy that code into your sketch. Don't forget to change the SSID and the password to whatever your router is. So the SSID is going to be your router name and password is whatever the password is to get into your router. You're going to see this under the area in step five. It's going to be highlighted with the circle. So make sure you change this. It's going to be C-O-N-S-T char with a star and then C-O-N-S-T char with a star again for SSID and password. Do not forget to change this or you will not be able to connect. All right, guys, and now for the fun part. We are going to solder the Feather Husa ESP8266 with the Feather Hitter Kits that came in. Should be simple. So let's get started. I got the ESP8266 soldered onto the feather head kit. Overall, it looks pretty decent. Like I said, I don't really know what I'm doing. I'm just going to solder and pray here. Hopefully, everything works out the way it should. Okay, next, we're going to take our seven segment 0.56 inch display. As you see, the pinout is a little bit different. So, we need to get this guy to be able to get plugged directly into here. So we're going to take this and plug it into this side of the board. Not the side that says feather. We're going to plug it into this side. We'll flip this guy this way to read the same and just simply plug them together like that. I'm hoping that's right. I am praying that's right because I think I only get one shot at this. Because it'll fit both ways. So let's hope that is the correct way. Okay, now that that's in there, we're going to solder this, the pins that are coming through right there. I hope I have enough of this stuff. If not, I'll have to run to Home Depot. I guess if I was a pro, I had way more than enough. Okay, not too challenging. Got the uh, seven segment display 0.56. My counter attached to the Adafruit 4x7 segment feather wing. So it's looking good. It's looking good. I hope this works. It is looking good though. 
So now what we want to do is, normally this is attached like this, guys. You can just break this off to the necessary amount of pins. So I just simply broke that off. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick this guy in here. Like so. So it'll fit correctly into there. And the same thing, I'm going to put this guy in here like so. And what's going to end up happening is we're just simply going to plug these two guys together. And you're going to have your counter. So we got to get to the soldering one more damn time. So now that I look at it, I should have done that first. So I guess I like a challenge. So let's get this guy soldered in and this side soldered in. And we're almost there. Get low, get low, get low. Okay, <laughs> I got it, but as you see, a little damage here and there, but it should be okay. And maybe this one I gotta push down a little more to get that pin on there. But I mean, overall, it's it's good. Overall, it's 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 it, it's okay. I think this should function. So let's move on to the next step. Okay, we're gonna put these two guys together, and next I'm gonna hook it back up just to see if I can get another sorry getting emails I'm gonna hook this back up afterwards to see if I can get another blink test okay it's together so I'm gonna hook it up just to check to see if I get a blink test and then we'll move forward I hope this works never hire me to solder anything hey we got some flashing so that's good I hope this thing works I would think plugging it in, this would flash some kind of way, but maybe not. Okay, I'm sending my blink test now. It's uploading. It's about 60% there, about 90%. I'm hoping I didn't fry anything. Okay, there's my blink. So now I just got to get this guy to send some type of signal this way. Okay, next we're going to download the Adreno YouTube API. So back in your program, you're simply going to click Sketch. Then you're going to go to Include library and under include library you're going to see manage libraries at the top go ahead and select that option next in the filter search option you're going to go ahead and just type youtube that way we can just uh get to it a lot quicker there and of course your option that should pop up should be a youtube api go ahead and select that option and install next in that same field you're gonna once the installation is done you're just going to type in adreno json and i'm going to go ahead and select the uh, first option and i'm going to select the uh, third option there and install after this just repeat that step and pop in adafruit gfx select that first option there and lastly the search is going to be for the adafruit led backpack select that and go ahead and install hey guys here's the part that i messed up on it took me forever to figure this out if you want to send that blink test to your seven segment uh, in the front there you want to actually go ahead and click file next you want to click examples you're going to see Adafruit LED backpack library and then you're going to see 7 seg click that guy and run that that should send a signal letting you know if your clock runs or not I, I had some issues with mine I had to backtrack I wanted to just let you guys know that okay we're on step 7 we're almost there guys. Next on step seven down there in the description, you wanna go ahead and download the uh, YouTube subscriber counter. It's a .ino file. And you wanna open this guy up in the Adreno program because you're gonna make some edits. Okay, once you get that program open, you're gonna go ahead and make some edits. You're gonna, once again, add your Wi-Fi network name where it says SSID. And you're gonna add your Wi-Fi password, of course, where it says password and then follow the steps below that to create or obtain your Google API key. Also right below that, you're gonna enter your YouTube channel name. Once you get your API key, simply plug it in to where it says your API key here. And then below that, where you see your channel ID here, 
plug in your YouTube channel. Also for your YouTube channel ID, you're gonna want to use the long numbers for your channels, not say for instance, my gaming channel is SSWI TV. I don't wanna use that. I wanna use the following in this screenshot. Lastly, you wanna hit the upload button and keep your fingers crossed <laughs> and hopefully you should see some numbers on this guy when you're done. So hit that upload button and keep your fingers crossed. All right guys, it came together really good. It was really nice. It took a lot of work, a lot of hard effort, determination, dedication to get this project going and we finally accomplished it. So as you take a look, your boy has his YouTube counter. So I'm not spending 450 bucks for a YouTube counter. I'm not spending, what was the minimum? I think it was like $280 and that was on sale for a YouTube counter. I build my own. And if you guys want one, all you gotta do is follow this tutorial and it's gonna show you exactly step by step. As far as the template to put in there, you can put whatever you want in there. Now you guys are watching Mad DIY and you're like, well, what the hell is Seller Addiction? That's my other channel. So you can check that channel out. That's why I made this basically because it's here at my warehouse and the business that we obtain and that we run is actually, it's not the business name, but that's the name of the channel, Seller Addiction. And we have a YouTube channel that kind of explains how we went from a $60 jar of change to turn it into over 35,000 a month in sales. So it just kind of explains the process and it's no Ty Lopez, it's none of that crap like that. I don't charge for anything. I explain exactly what I do. So check out Seller Addiction if you're interested. But check it out and if you like it and if you don't want to take the time to build it, I'm going to go ahead and list these guys on Etsy. I'm going to make a nice little discount deal. I'm probably going to give a few, a few away as well. So make sure you check that link in the description as well. I'll probably hold some sort of competition, maybe give one away to one of my two followers that I have here or subscribers that I have on here but I appreciate you guys a lot huge accomplishment goals obtained for this week make sure you check out the other channel seller addiction check out the t-shirts you like the t-shirts you can get shirts custom made at sosickwitted.com I mean we got our hands into everything you know a little pot here a little pot there thank you guys so much for tuning in mad DIY peace